decide is whether or not we want someone to lead our country that is uh, willing to just sort of close off all communications with Russia and say we're going to have a no-fly zone and we're going to shoot down Russian planes. That's what Hillary Clinton's saying. That's what Rubio's saying. It's, it's what Bush is saying. It's what Fiorina is saying. The vast majority of them all are saying, we shouldn't talk to Putin. We shouldn't have discussions with Putin, and we should have a no-fly zone in an airspace where Russia's already flying. I don't want to whitewash completely Putin. I think Putin has done some aggressive uh, moves both in the Middle East and around the periphery of, uh, of what used to be the Soviet Union. However, foreign policy realism looks at the world as it is and we try to make the best of the world as it is to protect our own self-interest. So right now, ISIS is not in our self-interest and they're not in the self-interest of Russia either. And so you, what we need to do is collect the different self-interests of all of the surrounding nations and try to get them to work towards one unified purpose. So sometimes that means accepting something that, I'm not jumping up and down because Russia's over there, but you accept the world as it is and try to make the best of it. For example, Russia has a long-lasting historical influence over Syria. They have a base there, they have troops there, and when push came to shove on the chemical weapons, the Russians actually were helpful in getting rid of the chemical weapons in Syria. Does it make Putin a saint? Does it make him a non-aggressor? He is, he is an aggressive individual. But I think I do agree with you that we need to have open lines of communication and where our interests are on the same side, we will work together. Even in, uh, with a horrific dictator of Stalin, we did work with Stalin because we thought Hitler was worse. So sometimes there are times when we uh, can work together. But, but don't the, have a computer. Style but, but the biggest, but the biggest thing is, is that we should not uh, have anyone running our country who says, "Oh, we're not going to have any communications with Russia," because I think that's a recipe for disaster. Even Reagan, who many re uh, Republicans glorify and think is one of our, our best presidents, he had open lines of communication. He negotiated with Gorbachev. We, we, we stood down on the Cold War, and we were able to have a peaceful resolution to the Cold War. That's what we should be very careful to try to move in that direction. Maybe one more back here on the right. Senator <coughs> Paul, um, I'm a pre-health student, a college student, and uh, I kind of wanted to, to know how your experience in medicine uh, will help you in the office, and what is the future of healthcare going to look like if you're a resident? Some people, you know, tell young people that might be doctors are going into health professions. They say, oh, it's terrible and don't do it because the government's messing it up. The government is messing it up and the government messes everything up. But I still love, I still love medicine and I don't try to discourage young people from going into health care because um, I do it even for free. So, I mean, I still do practice medicine for free. So, I, there is something great about uh, being involved with... Uh, you know, trying to fix something, you know, remove a cataract, let people see better. It is something amazing to be able to be part of that process. Um, what is the future of it? Which way are we going? The biggest problem we have in healthcare and in a lot of things in our country is a mismatch between what we spend and what comes in. It all comes down to that. Medicare, which takes care of all of our senior citizens, the average taxpayer pays $100,000 in taxes over their working career but the average recipient of Medicare takes out 350000 Just a mismatch between what goes in and what goes out. But you multiply that mismatch by like 60 or 70 million people on Medicare, and it's an enormous uh, number. It can be fixed. All things can be fixed, but what we need to uh, discover when we talk about health care is the issue of the distribution of health care and what kind of economic system we should use is an economic discussion, not a health care discussion. There is nothing unique to health care that it, you should have the same argument. Should the government be in charge of making and distributing iPads? Most people would say no, that would be ridiculous. And they, they could probably couldn't make an abacus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is health care, somehow we got confused and we said, oh, well, health care government ought to be involved in health care. They're not very good at distributing things. So if you have a single payer system, they ration it by waiting time and waiting lines. And so in England and Canada, you wait. We have some of that in our country. We have a single payer system in the Veterans Affairs, and consequently you have complaints of people waiting a long time to get into VAs. So uh, I'm not so pessimistic. I'd say don't go into health care, but I would say that we have to fix the mismatch between what comes in and what goes out as far as paying for it, because the complaint you hear from doctors, nurses, hospitals, everybody else, is that what the government is paying is shrinking, 
because there's not enough money. Until we fix the overall problem, those complaints will continue. But I think uh, as far as what has helped me in being a physician is, is that I think I see things as a problem. I really don't see things as a Republican or a Democrat. I see things as a problem and how do we solve the problem. And when I'm with a team of surgeons or physicians traveling to Haiti or to Guatemala or someplace, we don't uh, say, oh, well, you're a Republican, so you're obviously wrong, or you're a Democrat, so you're wrong. We just all have the same goal of trying to, to help the person to see better. And so I think being a physician helps you to see beyond maybe at least empty or petty partisanship. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>